Hey y'all, welcome back for another hunting ammo ballistics gel test. Today we're putting two loads head to head in 7 odd 8. Both Federal Fusion loads, we've got the 120 and 140 grain versions coming at you. And here are your boxes for your 120 grain and 140 grain Federal Fusion in 7mm odd 8. Both of them have the deer icon, that is the intended game meant to be hunted with this stuff. Let's flip it around. Take a look at the promo info. This is the same on both boxes, so feel free to stop, pause, and read all that if you would like to. Coming on over to the left, let's take a look at the ballistics info. Muzzle velocity for the 120 is stated at 3,000 feet per second. That's pretty darn fast for a 7 millimeter odd 8. And then for the 140s, we're looking at 2,850 feet per second. And there it is. There's your Federal Fusion in 7 millimeter odd 8. Let's go shoot the stuff and see how it does. And my test rifle today is my Ruger American Gen 2, chambered in 7 millimeter odd 8, of course. It's got a 20 inch barrel, and we are taking advantage of that threaded muzzle. Up top, we've got a Vortex Diamondback scope, and I've got it in my own custom painted Gen 1 stock. And coming on back, I've got to show you one of my handmade leather cartridge cuffs. Check out my website, masonleather.com, to get yourself one. I would love to make you one. And I've also got one of my super thick Latigo leather slings here, also available on my website, masonleather.com. If you're looking for a leather sling that'll last a lifetime, you're going to want to check these out. And coming around to the other side, I've got to show you my whitetail deer design. We'll be taking three shots from 100 yards, firing into 10% ballistics gel that has been calibrated to meet the FBI's ballistics testing protocol. And while ballistics gel isn't an exact proxy for big game, it does provide a repeatable medium through which to test various bullets and ammo against each other. After the shots, we'll examine bullet expansion, weight retention, penetration, and velocity. My goal is to provide hunters like you and I with the most objective information possible to help us make the best choice for our particular hunting situation. The ballistics gel in this video has been sourced from Clear Ballistics. You can find a link in the description. So let's go ahead and shoot it. And here are your velocities for that Federal Fusion 120 grain load in 7 odd 8. Minimum 2847, maximum 2978 for an average of 2920. And here are your velocities for the 140 grain Federal Fusion load. Minimum 2741, max 2763 for an average of 2754. And a quick announcement, if you'd like early access to my videos weeks and even months in advance of everyone else, become a channel member. The links will be in the video description and the pinned comment. Thanks, y'all. And we are down here at the blocks after firing those 120 grain Federal Fusions out of the 7mm odd 8. We captured all three bullets. We've got the 140 grainers over here. We'll look at those in a second. Let's go ahead and look at penetration for the 120s. It looks like we got 18 and a half, 19 and a half, and about 20 and a half inches respectively. And it looks like we got some really good expansion and mushrooming, as is standard with Federal Fusion. And coming on back to the first block, we got some nice wound cavities, nothing too explosive, and you don't typically see anything too wild up front with Federal Fusion. It's bonded, it doesn't, you know, just open up like a grenade on impact, it holds its weight together for penetration. But it looks like we start to open up really good about there, about the, I don't know, one three quarter, two inch mark. Have some nice little wound cavities that taper off, start to taper off right there about the nine and a half inch mark. This is pretty par for the course for white-tailed deer hunting ammo from what I've seen across all the loads I've tested. With the exception of the wound cavities themselves just not being super explosive, which is kind of standard for Federal Fusion. Coming over to the other side, we can kind of see one of those wound tracks right there. Get a real good look at it. This is a bullet that actually slipped out right here. I fired a fourth shot to have three bullets to look at, but there you can kind of see it comes in, opens up right there, tapers off, and that's going to do a number inside of the chest of any game animal. And there they are right there. They look really nice. And we'll dig those out here in a second and take a look. And coming over to the 140s, we also captured all three bullets. We've got two right here at, we'll give it 23 inches for that one and that one. And then one that went just a hair further, it's, oh gosh, it's kissing. It's right between 24 and a half and 25. We'll give it 25 inches. 
And just like the 120s over there, these 140s look like they expanded really nice and of course held together as is standard with Federal Fusion. Just look at those. Of course, we'll dig them out in a second and take a look. And it's always nice to see the heavier of the two bullets go a little bit deeper. I mean, that's what you would expect from something like this and that's what we got. And coming over to the first block, we've got wound cavities that look very, very similar to the 120 grain wound tracks, which isn't surprising. They're, they're very close to the same bullet. One's just about 17% heavier, but it comes in, starts to open up again at around the two inch mark. We've got our little bubble right there and then it tapers off by about, eh, this one goes a little bit deeper, nine to 10 inches. Then it starts to taper off and penetrate all the way through. So let's go ahead and dig them out and take a look. And real quick, if you're watching this video anytime around when it came out, I'm having a huge sale on my website, masonleather.com. Go check it out and get yourself something. All right, y'all, we've got all those fusion bullets pulled out of the block. So let's go ahead and take a look at them and run through all the metrics weight retention we got the 120s on top and the 140s on that bottom row for the 120s 111 113 and 116 grains for an average of 113 grains retained weight that's 94 percent weight retention absolutely excellent and i've come to expect really nothing less from federal fusion really good and for the 140s on that bottom row 135, 135, and 137 for an average of 136 grains retained weight, 97% weight retention, absolutely phenomenal. And it makes sense that the, the heavier bullets that are going a little slower would retain a little bit more weight, and they did. Glad to see that. It's logical. On to expansion for the 120s, 0 0.69, 0 0.71, and 0.74 inches for an average of 0 0.71 inches expanded diameter. That's 2.5x expansion, way over the 2x mark I like to see. And what I've come to expect from Federal Fusion, I've tested a lot of Fusion loads on the channel thus far in all kinds of different calibers. They all perform really well very similar to what we're seeing here. And just look at the photo of the bullets. The expansion is very uniform for the most part. That bullet on the top right there, one of the five sort of, you know, petals is a little bit folded back, but all in all, they're just beautiful star-shaped mushrooms. Great expansion. For the 140s, we saw 0 0.67, 0 0.69, and 0 0.71 inches for an average of 0 0.69 inches expanded diameter. Right up there with the 120s, this is 2.4x expansion, just a hair less, which you would expect from the heavier of the two bullets. A little bit less expansion. And that's exactly what we saw. On to velocity for the 120s, our high was 2979, our low was 2847 for an average of 2920 versus the factory build velocity of 3000 feet per second. So we came in 80 feet per second under factory build velocity. Keep in mind, we're shooting these out of a 20 inch barrel, not 22, not 24. Not surprising, we're not hitting that factory build velocity I don't expect to. I'll talk about that in a second. And the estimated velocity at impact down there at 100 yards for the 120s would be about 2,686 feet per second. For the 140s, our high was 2,763, our low was 2,741 for an average of 2,755, tight spread there, versus the factory build velocity of 2,850 feet per second. So that brings us to 95 feet per second under factory build velocity, very close to the 120s in terms of how many feet per second under we were. And again, it makes sense. We're shooting these out of a 20 inch barrel, but something that I did for seven millimeter R8, because I am using a 20 inch barrel, is I took all the velocity data from all the seven out eight loads I've tested, 19 of them so far, not all the videos are out, and I listed them out and I took a look at how much above or below, they were all below, factory build velocity each one was, to see what was kind of a normal range so we can at least compare ammo to ammo and see which ones are actually going slow and which ones aren't. And y'all, these Federal Fusion loads, both of them, the 120s and 140s, are going very, very fast for coming out of a 20 inch barrel. These were some of the fastest 7 odd 8 loads in terms of compared to its factory build velocity of any that I tested. These things are loaded nice and hot. And I have no doubt with either the 120s or 140s, if you were shooting these out of a 24 inch barrel, maybe even a 22 inch barrel, you would actually hit or exceed that factory build velocity. 
good stuff. And for the 140s, our estimated impact and velocity down there at 100 yards will be about 2,535 feet per second. On to penetration for the 120s, we saw 18 and a half, 19 and a half, and 20 and a half inches for an average of 19 and a half inches of penetration. That's right there at the 20 inch mark I like to see for medium game hunting. And it's commensurate with other federal fusion loads across calibers that I've tested. Fusion expands very rapidly, very wide, and it creates a lot of resistance when passing through the target. So it makes sense it's not an ultra deep penetrating load. These did exactly what I expected them to. For the 140s, we got a little bit deeper penetration. Always nice to see with a little bit heavier bullet of the same type. It's what we would expect and it's what we saw here. 23 inches, 23 inches, and 25 inches for an average of about 23 and a half inches of penetration. Both of these are right there in that range I like to see for your standard medium game hunting ammo. And kinetic energy wise for the 120s going on average 2,920 feet per second, we're looking at 2,272 foot pounds at the muzzle and about 1,923 foot pounds down there at 100 yards. For the 140s going on average 2,755 feet per second, we're looking at 2,359 foot pounds at the muzzle and about 1,997 foot pounds down there at 100 yards, just a, just a hair more energy than the 120s. Some people don't care about kinetic energy. I figure I'll just give you the information and you can do with it what you will. I always like another metric by which to compare ammo. All right, y'all, time for my final thoughts for those Federal Fusion loads in 7-8, the 120 and 140 grain versions. Y'all, I've said it before. I'm sure I'll say it again. It's become kind of like a broken record on the channel, but the results speak for themselves. Federal Fusion just plain performs every freaking time every time it just it cut for what it is and what it's meant for it blows everything else just about out of the water there's some competition that comes close in my opinion nothing beats it not for what it is we had great weight retention with both bullet weights incredible expansion velocity as i said before was very very fast compared to all the other seven odd eight loads that i've tested it's loaded nice and hot you don't have to worry about pipsqueak loads here unlike some others there were some seven millimeter odd eight loads that i've tested the videos may or may not be out yet that came in over 200 feet per second under factory spec these were both at 80 and 95 feet per second under respectively from a 20 inch barrel absolutely phenomenal and penetration wise they're both in that sort of perfect range for white tailed deer hunting hogs black bear stuff like that now the 120s if it were up to me and i were hunting stuff a little bit bigger i wouldn't use the 120s i'd step up to the 140s get you a bit more penetration that's why they offer different bullet weights if i was setting up a dedicated white tail rifle for seven odd eight really i would shoot both of these and just see which one my rifle shot more accurately and i would go with that but if i was doing you know some more black bear larger hogs stuff like that where i just want a little bit more insurance step up to the 140s and get you a little bit more penetration so overall phenomenal performance it's it's become like a broken record with federal fusion here on the channel it's hard to find a bad thing to say about it so if you've used this ammo on game let us know in the comments how it did for you and check out my website masonleather.com and get yourself some leather gear handmade by me just for you I've been handcrafting leather gear for hunters for over a decade and I would love to make you something. And there are hundreds of reviews on my website so you can see what real hunters have to say about their mason leather gear. And also tons of photos showing all the customizable options including name, initial, and caliber stamping as well as wild game designs and more. Everything is handmade by me right here in the USA. I would love to be a part of your hunt through my leather gear. And it helps support this channel so I can bring you more hunting ammo ballistics gel tests and lots of other cool stuff in the future. The link will be in the video description and the pinned comment or you can just type masonleather.com into your web browser. And click one of these cards for more hunting ammo ballistics gel tests.